If you don't address these false beliefs about yourself and your drumming, you'll get stuck, burned out, and you'll have to throw away your dreams of ever becoming a great drummer. I know that sounds dramatic, but this is a real issue. Today, I'll share with you the most destructive lies I hear from students and how we can overcome and reverse these so that you are confidently growing week after week and reaching your potential on the drums that you were created to do. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the non glamorous drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out today. My goal is to help you become the musician others want to play with and who sounds awesome playing songs musically with a band. And I help you get there by teaching you the core drumming skills to get you the results faster in the practice room. And hey, speaking of faster results, I want to help you grow faster by knowing what to practice. That is so key, knowing what to practice, because if you don't know what to practice, you're probably gonna waste a lot of time and not grow nearly as quickly as you could. So I want you to grab my totally free PDF guide. It's called the three-part daily practice routine for busy drummers. What makes this guide so cool, so helpful, and so unique is that it breaks down all of drumming, all of drumming skill into three categories. If you consistently work a little bit of each of these three core pillars of drumming, then you can know that your practicing is balanced, you're not leaving anything out, and you're making steady progress, and that's so important. So this is a no-brainer. Go grab the Know It to Practice three-part daily practice routine guide for busy drummers. If you just got 30 minutes a day, this is the guide for you. All right, on with today's lesson. Tell me if you relate to this. Early on in my drumming journey, I carried a lot of fear on my shoulders. Early on, it was the fear that I would never be good enough to play with a band. Now, from the age of like eight, nine, 10, I knew that one day I wanted to play drums in a rock band. That was just my crazy childhood dream, and I kind of didn't think it was actually possible or ever gonna happen. And once I started learning the drums and I realized, you know what, this opportunity might come up, I became more and more scared of the opportunity even as I knew I was more likely to have the opportunity, if that makes sense, where it's like, you know what, maybe I actually could do this, but I became more and more terrified because I felt like I would never fully be prepared to play with a band. And then years later beyond that, I felt like I would never be good enough to record. I heard the, you know, the best drummers in the world recording and sounding awesome on records. I thought there's no way I could ever do that. I can't be a studio drummer. And then I thought I would never be able to sight read and learn music quickly on the fly, like quickly learn a song by ear or quickly sight read something and be able to play that and play it on a gig, perform it at a show. These were just things that I, I didn't believe I was fully capable of doing. But then my drum teacher that I had in high school, as well as teachers I had in college and other friends and coaches, mentors started believing in me and encouraging me and basically saying, look, Steven, you think you can't do this, but you have to at least try it. And when you do, you're going to find that actually maybe you can do this, even if you fail at first, even if you can just a little bit do this, you're going to be able to. And so what started happening was when I believed I could do something, I eventually discovered that I actually could. And here's what we're getting at here. Everybody needs somebody who believes in them. Maybe you've had somebody who's believed in you at some point in your life, and you found the power of that to encourage you, to empower you, and motivate you to do something. Because once you believe you can do it, you're so much more empowered to actually go and do it. So even if I'm the only voice today in your life telling you, you can master the drums, you can do this, because this is a learned skill anybody can do, even if I'm the only one, okay, let it be me. Let me be your coach, your mentor, your encourager here, because I want to help you reverse some of these unhealthy beliefs, these toxic mindsets that hold us back. Because there are so many lies that we believe about ourselves and if you don't have the teacher there, the, the mentor there, the encourager right there in your life, let me be that person to help you flip these things around so that you now have healthy beliefs and identities about yourself and about your drumming so that you can step into the skill that you are called to step into and master the instrument. You ready? Let's do this. So not all of these 10 statements are explicit across the board lies. Um, often the underlying meaning or the internal struggle conveyed by these statements is where the lie actually is that needs to be reversed. So you'll find that to be true. All right, number one, I hear this from so many students. I didn't start early as a kid, so I'll never be as good as I could be. In other words, kind of the, the underlying belief here, I've lost years of potential time and I can't get it back. So what's the point in learning the drums now? So this is one of those things where, okay, sure, if you start drums when you're like five years old, then that does give you more time, and that's great. But here's the thing. When you approach a new skill, 
later on in life. With the maturity gained by living more life, you learn it and you understand it more deeply. So I started playing the drums seriously when I was in high school, and I often wish that I had started as a young kid. I always thought, wow, I could be so much better if I'd started as a young kid. Even still, it took me years to build the, the musical maturity I needed to actually play well with a band and play musically and make smart musical choices and record well. Those were skills that just took maturity to develop. So the benefit, if you're starting drums later on in life, the benefit you have is you've lived some life, you have some maturity. And so you're able to approach it with, with a, a, a mindset of wisdom that you could not have had as a little kid. There's something that you as a beginner, let's say you're 65 years old, you as a beginner 65 year old has, there's something you have that the 12 year old prodigy blazing around the kid on YouTube does not have. And that is musical maturity and wisdom that you're gonna be able to step into more quickly. So remember that, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this as we go, so don't believe that it's too late to get going. There's a lot you can do even later on in life. Number two, I don't have big dreams of playing with a band, so I won't be as good as a result. Well, this is one of those things that, okay, that doesn't really sound too much like a lie, right? But when we look at, I think what's really going on here, kind of the underlying sentiment is, the best drummers play with great bands, therefore I need to do that, or else none of this is worth attempting for me. In other words, it's the belief that the reason for playing the drums is to play with a band, and if I'm not gonna do that, then what's the point? Well, that's a great purpose for playing the drums. And I personally, I want every drummer to play with a band at some point, even if it's just jamming with friends. But there, there are drummers out there, there are students I've had who literally just wanna play for their own personal discipline and pleasure, and even their own personal mental therapy, because there, there really is some truth to that, where it can help you mentally and psychologically playing an instrument. And so maybe that's the reason. And that is totally fine. Yes, playing with a band is fantastic, it's a great trial by fire that will teach you a lot, but that doesn't have to be your goal. You can play for your own personal pleasure, and that is okay. Even if you don't have big dreams of playing with a band, you, you should still learn the instrument because there are so many other benefits across the board. Line number three. Okay, this one I've heard um, a whole bunch, and I think a lot, of us, a lot of us realize this is a lie, but for some reason we still believe it, and we still, we still kind of live this out in our practicing a lot of times. Here it is. If I can master all the rudiments, I'll be able to play more interesting fills. Now I'm calling myself out on this too, because I remember in college, my goal was to learn as many crazy sticking patterns and rudiments as possible, because I believed if I did that, I could be a more creative, unique, interesting drummer. And I think the, the, the core belief that a lot of us have here is that the most cool musical fills are built of complex rudiments. But the thing is, the most compelling fills out there are actually simple. The truth is that the most creative musical fills are the way they are because of space. They're generally built of simple singles, and the space within the rhythms creates compelling melody. And what this comes down to is play more from your ear than from your hands, and that's something that happens naturally with the musical maturity that comes with age, bringing us back to point number one. When you start later on in life, your focus tends to naturally be listening. You've spent decades listening to music, and so you know the musical ideas. You're just trying to convey them. And so later on in life, a lot of times you're able to actually create this space and melody in your playing because you're paying more attention and you're not just trying to play as fast as you can. And so that's a really cool benefit to starting later. As a matter of fact, most, most of the great fills out there are just made up of singles, especially when we're talking rock, pop, country, you know, typical styles of music that we listen to and play most of the fills are just singles. And even in jazz, a lot of the jazz fills are not crazy stickings. They might be some doubles, some paradiddles, things like that. But even then, we've just got three rudiments. You don't need to master all the rudiments to play cool fills. Focus on your singles. Get those singles solid and steady, and you will be able to play 99% of everything you need to. Line number four. Okay, this is a big one. If I buy a nicer kit, I'll sound better. <laughs> And this is because we think that, well, the best drummers in the world play super expensive kits, so surely a $5,000 kit would help me out at least a little bit. And I think most of us, kind of like the, the previous thing about the rudiments, I think most of us realize this is not entirely true. Most of us realize that just because we buy a nicer kit doesn't mean we're gonna sound like, you know, Steve Gadd or Dave Weckl or, you know, whoever our favorite drummer is. But we still tend to believe this, and we still want better and better gear, and we're constantly thinking about gear. So the truth is, no amount of gear can make up for a lack of skill. And I guess just to put this in perspective, if you were to take a 
$5,000 kit and a $500 kit. And let's say you even tune both of the kits the same, as similarly as possible. And somebody plays that $500 kit really well and hits the drums nice and evenly and in the middle, it's not gonna sound too bad. But let's say you put the beginner drummer on the $5,000 kit and they're like accidentally hitting rim shots on the toms, they're like not hitting in the middle and the playing is haphazard and sloppy. It doesn't matter how expensive or well-tuned that $5,000 kit is, it's not gonna sound good. Your focus needs to be on precision and getting good sounds out of your drums and that starts with hitting in the middle, lifting the stick out, pulling the sound out so to speak, and that all starts with basic singles. We talked about singles a minute ago. Practicing your singles so they're nice and even, that, that alone, even singles with loose relaxed grip translates to better sound on the drums. Practicing your singles will serve you so much better in the long run than spending thousands of dollars on an expensive kit. We could talk about this all day, but I think you get the picture. Lie number five. This is something I, I hear a lot and I'm constantly fighting against as a teacher and a coach. The only way I can learn a song well is to download the sheet music and learn it note by note. Really what's being spoken here is if I don't play a song exactly like the recording, it is wrong. And the thing is in music, that's, that's not true. That's not the way it works. Um, I was watching the movie Hidden Figures recently about the, the ladies at NASA back in the early 60s that were doing the math and like they were creating, figuring out how to do things that had never been done before so that the astronauts could launch and then re-enter the atmosphere and all of that. And with NASA back in the 60s, they were having to figure this stuff out and having to do the math to make sure that the people sent into outer space could get back. And if you messed it up, that meant somebody died. So not getting it right meant loss of life, and that was a big deal. And I know that many of you, I've had many students from an engineering background and who have, uh, who, who have worked in these mathematical backgrounds, just like NASA, where if you don't do something exactly right, where it's not perfect, then it's wrong. You know, the, the satellite goes out of orbit or burns up. The astronauts don't make it back. The car doesn't drive. The plane doesn't fly. And in that world, things have to be right. The math has to be perfect. But this is music. And in music, yes, there's, you know, you could say some math is involved in music, but it doesn't have to be that precise. You can loosen up a little bit. You can relax because music is more about creativity and expression and art. It's more of an art than it is a math. That's my opinion. And so when you're learning music, you don't need to play it note for note. Your goal needs to be learning it by ear. That's going to serve you better in the long term than trying to play each note exactly right. What's gonna, what you're actually gonna have more fun with is listening to a song and trying to just play along and feel the music and have fun. It's gonna be more enjoyable and you're gonna grow much more and develop your ear in the process. So don't hold, your, don't hold yourself to that perfection. Don't go for the sheet music drum tab thing. Just jam, have fun, let yourself just not be perfect. You're gonna learn more that way and have a lot more fun. So kind of our, our wrap up point here for reversing this lie is music is about creating and improvising. So developing your ear is the far more important skill here. All right, line number six. So kind of the flip side of this in a way, we're talking about you know sheet music. Um, line number six, I can't read music, so learning the drums will take longer for me. And I think this is because kind of the underlying belief here is without reading music, I can't use the classic method books. And so really the lie here, because that, I mean, that's not untrue. Yeah, if you can't read music, you can't really use the classic method books. So that's not a lie. But I think the actual lie here that's being believed internally underneath all of this is that I can't learn to read music. There's a lot of drummers out there who just have been self-taught. They've never taken formal lessons. And so they've come to believe that they can't read music. Maybe that's you. The truth is you can, you can learn to read music. It's really not that difficult. And by the way, many of the drumming greats can't and never could read music, but they focused on developing their ear, like we talked about in the previous point, which is the highest drumming skill there is. So there is nothing wrong with learning by ear and spending the majority of your time trying to learn by ear and learn songs that way, because your ear, that's the, the most valuable thing that you have as a drummer and as a musician. But know that learning to read music is not that difficult. I'll link some lessons in the description below to help you out with that. It's a very simple learned skill. It is not as difficult as learning a new language. Yes, it's like a language, but it's very simple, very simple and mathematical, not hard to learn, and you can definitely reap a lot of reward from learning how to do that. All right, line number seven. So this kind of uh, refers us back to our first one. 
This is, I'm over 60 years old, so I'll never be able to play fast. And so kind of the fear here is, can I really learn technique without pain when my limbs can't do what they used to? I've had a lot of students who are in their 60s and 70s, and this is something that's been expressed to me many times where the fear is that, you know, I'm starting drums later in life. Will I ever be able to get my hands to do what maybe they could have done 30, 40 years ago, but they just can't do now? Um, and, and so is there any point in me doing this? Well, I won't lie to you. You probably won't be able to play as fast as the 13-year-old child prodigy on YouTube or as fast as you could have played when you were 13 if you had started learning then. But I can't play that fast either, and no one needs to play as fast as the child prodigy on YouTube in order to be musical and to play your favorite songs. And so this kind of, this kind of bounces us back to, uh, let's see, if I can master all the rudiments, I'll be able to play more interesting fills. That lie, this kind of goes alongside that, where the truth is that you don't need to play fast in order to play the drums well. So many of the drumming greats couldn't really play that fast, didn't have incredible chops. And if they did, they didn't need to for so many of the hit songs they played on. Think about Ringo Starr with the Beatles. He's always the classic example. People give Ringo a hard time for not having chops. He did have some chops, but he didn't have to use them all the time because they were playing simple pop songs. And in order to create compelling drum parts, he did not need to blaze around the kit. And for so many songs you play, you don't need those crazy chops. And so you can really be a very musical, very compelling drummer even if you're, you know, you're in your 60s or 70s, just by being thoughtful and intentional in the way you play and not just trying to play fast. There's a lot more to drumming than playing fast. And so I hope that's something you're able to realize. So even if your hands can't do what they used to or what you see other people on YouTube doing, do not let that stop you. All right, line number eight. So this is something I hear more from the younger students, whether it's folks my age or younger. I don't have enough time to learn the drums. And this is very understandable. It doesn't sound like a lie, right? I mean, speaking from my own experience, I've got two kids, three and one. So it's very difficult to make time for things because life is just busy and chaotic. And when you're young and you've got a family and you're working full time or you're in school, things pile up and it's really difficult to have time to learn the drums. But I think really the underlying fear and the lie that we're believing here is this. I'm afraid I'm starting something I won't be able to finish. What will others think when I fail to accomplish anything three months from now? So the fear is, well, what if I'm not able to make enough time for this to get anything done? So what if this just doesn't pan out and just doesn't work and I've wasted time? It's kind of that fear of running out of time in a way, just that fear of, I can't prioritize this because I won't be able to do anything with it. And the truth is, yeah, you probably don't have time. You have to make time. So is this something that you really want to do? This all goes back to when I was kind of sharing from my own personal experience as we got started today. I want to help you with this because I believe you can do it and I have a whole bunch of resources for you. And if you're having trouble getting motivated and getting going here, I want you to know that you can do this, you can accomplish this, and there's so many free resources I've got here on this channel, so many free e-guides that I give away, that you have everything you need to succeed. Even if you just give yourself three months, even if you're like, okay, I'm busy, I've got 30 minutes a day that I can devote to practicing, I'm gonna make that 30 minutes of time, I want you to know that you can get a lot done in 30 minutes a day over a three-month period. Maybe give yourself a three-month trial, Download some of my e-guides, watch some of my other lessons, get started, get to work practicing, know that you can do this, you are capable of mastering the drums, and I think you can get more done than you think in the next three months. So don't fear the failure, don't fear running out of time, Make carve out those little bits of time, make the time, you'll be able to accomplish more than you think. All right, lie number nine. This is one I used to deal with a, a whole bunch. Um, when, I, when I lived in an apartment, and I know many of you live in places where you can't make noise, Drums are loud, so practicing will be a struggle. And hey, that's not entirely untrue, but I think the, there's a fear, there's a fear in this. I'm afraid that because practicing isn't convenient, I may not do it, therefore I'll fail. <laughs> so it's kind of like the previous thing of, I'm afraid I won't have enough time to really get anything done, therefore I might fail, why start? And so the fear here is, well, this is not a convenient instrument to practice, it takes up space, it's loud. So is there any point in investing the time and the money and the resources into this when I, I might not get anything done? Why not play flute? It's smaller. <laughs> Why not play bass? It's quieter. And so I think that's what we, tend to, what we tend to think through here. But the truth is you can make tremendous progress learning the drums without making noise. And I have a whole bunch of content here on the channel about this. In case you didn't know, I lived in an apartment for two and a half years. And I started this YouTube channel when I lived in a 450 square foot apartment. 
In my early videos, you'll see me sitting in front of my closet door. That's where I kept my drum set and I would pull the drum set out and I had the, like, the pads, I had it all muffled down. Go back, at, go back to some of the oldest videos here on the channel. The videos are terrible. Um, I'm, I'm just like a deer in the headlights trying to look at the camera and not blink and I was, it, it, they're, they're awful. But you see how I was getting this, done in the, getting this done in an apartment and you can do it too. What's so cool is that right now in 2023, there are so many great quiet practice resources out there. You can get Remo silent strokes for your drums. You can get True Sound mesh heads for your drums. The True Sound ones are really great. You can get the Artom black hole mesh heads that you place over the drums. They're super convenient. You can get the Zildjian L80 low volume cymbals. You can get the True Sound low volume cymbals. Sabian makes them too. Everybody, so many companies are making this stuff that wasn't around, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. And so now it really can be convenient to practice quietly and you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on an electric kit. Now, this is just my opinion. This is a topic for another video, and I've made videos about this before, but you will grow more deeply if you practice more accurately by playing on a muffled down or a, a quiet acoustic kit instead of an electric kit. Unless you're spending you know, seven grand on an e-kit, it's not gonna be very realistic, and so you'll actually have more productive practice on an acoustic kit that maybe you've put mesh heads on, you know, you've put the Artom black hole and the snare, you've got the low volume cymbals, that's way more realistic. I know it might not be quite as much fun, but if you're fortunate to have some microphones and you can mic up a practice kit, you can actually do a lot with it and get some really cool fun sounds and have a lot of luck practicing. Also though, forget all that, forget spending the hundreds of dollars on practice equipment and low volume cymbals. If you have a practice pad, remember that 99% of what we play on the drums is built up of singles, whether we're keeping time, we do a lot of timekeeping, right? That's what we drummers do. Whether you're playing fills, there's a lot of 16th based fills, 8th based fills. 99% of what you're gonna play, especially if you're playing rock, is built of singles. So what does that mean? That means that the most important, most productive, most effective thing you can ever practice are singles. And guess what? You can do that on a practice pad. If all you've got is a practice pad, you can sit there and practice singles, practice playing them softly, loudly, work on your grip, keeping things loose. If you do that, that will reap dividends across the board and it will not matter that you haven't made noise on your kit in weeks. I've had students, this is amazing to me, um, it's so cool, but I know this to be true because I've experienced myself, my students have too. I've heard from students where they'll be practicing on a pad, working on the hand technique for weeks, maybe while they're traveling, maybe they can't make a lot of noise, and then they come back to the kit or they go play a gig and they feel a tremendous difference in their playing. That is so cool and it's so true. So let that be you. If you need to not make noise, if you're afraid of the inconvenience of that, get the gear you need to practice more quietly, but focus on the pad practice. That is not an unproductive thing. Okay, last um, and probably uh, most, most important, <laughs> that's why I saved it for last, line number 10. This one has to do with identity. This is a big one. I'm not a real drummer, therefore I'll settle for mediocre. <laughs> now, rarely is that the thing we say to ourselves. Usually what we're thinking is something more like, I'm not good enough and probably never will be. I'm not as talented as others. I'm a fraud, kidding myself that I can or ever will be able to play the drums. So those three statements right there are things I've literally pulled out of surveys that I've sent out to my email list, things that people have told me that I've heard directly from students not good enough, not talented enough, I'm a fraud. I'm not a real drummer. If I'm not a real drummer, how am I ever supposed to be good? Here's the problem here. You are identifying as a fraud. You are identifying as not good enough. You're identifying as not a real drummer. And for as long as you're doing that, for as long as you're believing that about yourself, you're not gonna be a real drummer. You're never gonna get as good as you could because you've got some flawed mindsets and bad beliefs about yourself because you become what you believe about yourself. You become what others believe about you. You become what you identify as. So you really have to be careful with this. You become what you identify as, so start calling yourself a drummer today and you'll gradually step into that identity more and more. Now something I tell my students that if you want to master the drums, start acting like a drummer. Start being a drummer and decide, okay, I am a real drummer. So no joke, I have a student, she told me this recently that um, something that helped her in her practicing was her favorite drummer is Roger Taylor. She's also a fan of Jeff Percaro, a lot of the drumming greats. And so she would sit down in her kit to play and, and decide, all right, I am Roger Taylor today. I'm gonna play like Roger Taylor. I am a professional drummer. I'm a touring drummer. I'm a recording drummer. I'm going to sound awesome. I am a real drummer. And that literally helped her play better. 
don't write this off as a silly psychological thing because this is so true. You literally, if, if, if you take on the mindset of, all right, I am a drummer, you are going to play better. And so give it a try. And by the way, any real drummer out there, anybody out there you're thinking of as a real drummer, technically didn't start out a real drummer. They started out an amateur beginner at some point, but they decided they would become one. And so I want you to go ahead and start identifying as a real drummer. I am a drummer. I am a musical drummer. I am going to nail songs. I can do this. I believe that I can do this. And as you start stepping into that identity, you're going to begin taking on the characteristics of that and having healthy beliefs and mindsets around that. It's so true. This is something that um, people a lot smarter than me have studied for years and written books about that your identity determines your habits. And if you decide I am a drummer, I am a real drummer, I am a disciplined drummer who practices and who gets good at this, that is going to affect your habits. It's gonna affect how much you practice and how well you practice and how you approach it and what you believe about yourself. It is so true. And so take on that mindset, that identity today. You are a fellow non-glamorous drummer. You are a fellow non-glamorous drummer who is practicing and who can be musical and who can master the drums. I believe you can do it. Even if nobody else does around you, you can do this. When I started, I didn't think I could do it. Like I told you about earlier, I, there were so many things I was scared of doing that I did not think I was capable of doing, but there were just a few voices in my life that encouraged me and said, look, you're actually not bad at this. And just those tiny bits of encouragement went such a long way and I thought, you know what? I can do this. I can be a drummer. I can be a, a band drummer. I can be a recording drummer. I can read music. And as I took on those beliefs and those mindsets, I started working hard at it and I got to where I could do it. You can too. So this has been a long lesson. Thanks for sticking with me. If you have stuck with me this, this whole way, I have no doubt you are gonna grow like crazy on the drums because it means you're serious about all this. Serious enough to dig into the mindsets and the psychological stuff that's so important and that so many drummers write off and that so many instructors on the internet and on YouTube don't talk about because it's not something everybody takes seriously, but it is serious. So I gotta ask you, what do you believe about yourself? What identity have you given yourself? What identity will you give yourself? Because maybe it needs to change. You don't have to tell me in the comments unless you just want to. This is just for you to think about, but I want that to be your big takeaway here. What are you identifying as? What are you believing about yourself? What are some beliefs or identities that need to be reversed? All right. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I know we've gone deep and we've talked about the deep fears and the emotional stuff, but um, these things are so important, so critical, just as important or more important than the hand technique and the coordination. So take this, run with it, take action, go grab that free e-guide I told you about, the Know What to Practice three-part daily practice routine. It's gonna help you a ton if you are a drummer with a busy life and you wanna get a lot done in 30 minutes a day, that guide is for you. Go check it out in the description below. All right, I'll see you on the next lesson. You can do this. Stay non-glamorous.